Nano Dimension Technical Analysis, Fundamental Statistics, along with reviewing my current positions and their price target. Starting off with the price action, we have another price target of 1640 on this bullpen. And now I will say right now, before you get your hopes up and you're and also in the back of your mind, you're wondering, Brandon, why are you getting so many bullpenists recently? Like, what the heck? Well, actually, it's kind of because these stocks move very similar. If you watch the Bio Nano video, it's very similar to what so to what is happening there as far as what nano dimensions current chart pattern is looking like we have a descending trend line this red trend line right here let's zoom in so you can see exactly what i am on the 10th of february last month we have a per validation on this descending red resistance trend line along with plenty not on the 10th right but along with this ascending level of support here that is going to make a symmetrical triangle aka bull flag aka bull pennant aka we're mooning soon get 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 your seatbelts in strapped in we are going to the moon all right not actually but in my opinion we have a high likelihood of actually going to the moon very soon based on two things number one you know dimensions cool off is is it's definitely there it's uh it's indefeasible right it's definitely there uh and our rsi has cooled down We've, we're going to be looking at the rsi exact numbers as far as the relative strength index the bollinger bands macd moving averages all that we're going to be looking at but as far as my main two reasons we are we are cooled down we have plenty of room to run it's not like we're overextended up at 18 dollars or 15 dollars right we're we're barely above 10 that's number one number two the nasdaq our overlords nat nano dimensions overlord the only index that matters basically most of the time seems like is looking good in my opinion short term fundamentals are looking good if you want to see fundamentals you can check out any nasdaq indicator uh an update video that i've done they are uh, at least the recent ones uh, at least one of them is fairly recent so the nasdaq but a quick rundown as far as the technicals the nasdaq is not looking too bad we've had our cool down rsi is cooled down now plenty of room to run and most importantly similar to nano dimension our price target is where we've not even come close we've not we're currently we're not even halfway to it we're almost halfway to it right now and uh we did break out of the symmetrical triangle we confirmed the breakdown right now the last day of trading we literally came down exactly as i predicted literally we have these trend this is why technical analysis is so beautiful right literally we have these trend lines drawn out and it tells you exactly when to get into a stock or the market or when the nasdaq is going to bounce right literally bounced perfectly off this trend line and we're on the way back up now so we're looking fine and the market's literally just literally they did this okay let's maximize this real quick okay besides the little sour hour sell-off right because it's friday right we literally got a bounce and we were climbing the entire day basically and for the nasdaq we didn't really see much of a sell-off in the nasdaq right the dow and s p were freaking out trying to get out of here nasdaq is chilling out because most of the more, more valuable stocks a lot of them are in the nasdaq a lot of them are overvalued in the nasdaq as well but uh also a lot of great ones the the greatest and the worst stocks are in the Nasdaq, or at least move more similar to the Nasdaq, not in the Nasdaq index, right? But, but, uh, but, okay. Let's go over some other indicators now. We've gone over my synthesis on why I think we're going to be looking good and why I think this price chart will be hit in the near term. Now let's go over some specific indicators. Four hourly chart, relative strength index, forty-seven twenty-two. We, like I said, we're below neutral. We're closer to oversold and being overbought. This is a fine entry point in my opinion. Anything under ten is a steal long term, and ten twenty-two is not bad. All right, that's a fine entry point. Uh, my average. Let's see what my what is my average. Let's see here. Okay, to be completely transparent, I do have a position into the stock. Uh, okay, I uh, my average is twelve. Right, I got in this at I got in this at ten, I believe, and I took profits way long ago. Seems like, but yeah, I've re-entered now, and obviously re-entered a little too early. Um, but the, yeah, there you go, forty-five. Yeah, that's my small position right now. But but I will be looking to add and play the breakout. If we get one, potentially, if I have enough buying power right right now, we have a decent amount of buying power. But let's look at some other indicators. Let's look at the moving averages and the exponential moving average daily. We have all the golden crosses you could wish for now. <laughs> Quite confusing chart. Okay, is similar to the matrix. All right, like all those codes on that computer. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're a beginner, especially, that's what this is going to look to you, look like to you. But follow me. Listen, take notes. You will understand it. And look over here if you need a key. 200-day exponential moving average below the 55 in the 15-day moving averages. Extremely bullish. Golden crosses. Everything checks out. Green flags everywhere. This is a good entry point. Okay. I mean, this isn't a scratch. Never mind that. It's a good entry point. In my opinion, it is, right? But as far as the moving averages, we're in bullish territory. And there's going to be bullish sentiment in the stock. Because of this, taking a look at the daily MACD, we have got 
the bullish confirmation. The signal line is below the MACD line. This is that was a buy signal, right? When those crossed, that was a buy signal, and you could have taken profits, right? But uh, guys, beware of the daily MACD, right? The four hour of the MACD is a lot more accurate sometimes. And right now, we are in bearish territory on the MACD on the four hourly, which is why you want to look at multiple uh, time frames always. Uh, I wouldn't stress going over all of them, right? There's a thousand of them that you can look on, right? <laughs> um, but just at least go over a couple, especially the four hourly, hourly and daily. Those are the most important ones, in my opinion. Looking at the daily Bollinger Bands, let's maximize this for you. All right, let's get this crap out of the way so you can see clearly middle Bollinger Band is trading at 1028. Okay, we are seeing some a little bit of resistance, right? We're currently trading at 1020s, right? We are currently getting some resistance from that middle Bollinger Band. The outside Bollinger Bands are hooking in an insane amount right now. That means decreased volatility when these two outside bands shorten the distance between each other. And likewise, when they go, you know, uh, conversely, when they, when they hook out, that means more volatility. Um, so that is, I mean, there's not really, it, 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 it's not really bullish or bearish, uh, but we are going to be seeing decreased volatility likely in the near, in the near term compared to when we were, you know, like this. Or, or like this, right? Um, so that's what we're looking at as far as the Bollinger Japan's. Now let's look at what everyone wants to see. The fundamentals and the arc, everything. We're going to be going to everything. Recent news, due diligence. All right, we, I got everything for you. And I'll link everything to you. You're welcome. Short volume ratio. What does this actually mean? Brandon, what does this mean? What does this mean? 17 million shares were traded on the 19th Friday, yesterday, last day of trading. 2 million of these shares were traded short. Now, this doesn't mean that they were sold, that they were covered, right? That does or, or necessarily take new people taking up short positions. This just means that there were 2 million shares either bought back uh, by means of shorts covering their position, or it means people taking up new short positions. That's what the short volume means and short volume ratio. That's just the percentage of this, uh, of this, uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is 11% of that. Um, so that is, uh, it's not necessarily high. There's not really much to say about this. Um, but this is something to keep in mind. It's better than like having five, right? If you're a bull, you want to actually have a lot of this because that means they're going to have to cover eventually. So, you know, that will send the stock prior price higher eventually, but that's a little more complex, but we're not doing a short interest, short, short, uh, introduction today. Institutional ownership is 21%. That's bullish. Institutional ownership, a little overrated in my opinion, but bullish nonetheless, right? Slightly bullish. Now this is what everyone wants to see. ARC Q and all the ARC funds, right? They've been steadily adding very slowly, ever so slowly adding shares the last couple of days, right? Well, not, not really the last couple of days, like in the last couple of weeks, right? Last two weeks have been slowly adding, so they are still very bullish, right? They still have a ton of shares. Look, they almost have just as many shares as there was on the peak, right? And they had a lot of, uh, you know, obviously ARC got hit an insane. And they got hit really hard in the correction, right? They might That might have got hit the hardest, honestly, the ARC funds maybe. Um, but uh, they're not really selling nano dimension. This tells you, and, and they have to, right, to get their margin down or else they're going to get margin calls, right? Um, and rebouncing their portfolio because everything's going down in the ditch, right? Um, so this is this is very bullish news. Okay, same thing with ARCW, same thing with ICRL, except we have this random spike here, which is pretty funny. I don't know if this is a glitch. I'm assuming this is some sort of mistake. Um, <laughs> they, they did a quick day trade in here, uh, you know, 45 million shares down to less than a million. Uh, that's something to keep in mind, but the moral of the story is they are keeping the same amount of shares, basically. Um, so... Yeah, nano dimension. Okay, this is the news. I'll link this as well. I'll link. Uh, I'll link this and this for you. You are welcome. First ever nano dimensions. First ever additively man manufactured electronic uh, monolithic RF mon communication circuit. Blah blah blah. Okay, you can read this if you want. This is good news. This is really cool stuff. Go read this. Go get into esoteric technology. Go do your do go do your digging. All right, I'm not going to do this for you because you can do this pretty easily on your own. I think. Um, nano dimension due diligence. I will link this as well. You're welcome. I know. I know. I'm a savior. I'm your savior. I'm like Loki at the end of Thor Ragnarok. Okay, stupid reference. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, this is good. This is a good uh, due diligence piece right here, in my opinion. But of course, it's Reddit. Take it for what it is. It's just some random person. Now, next up, average monthly stock market returns. No one else on YouTube is going over this stuff. No, not one person that I know of is going over this stuff. We are in the end of March. This does not mean that you're guaranteed to get this kind of return monthly, right? This doesn't mean that at all. But on average, since 1980 to two years ago or three years ago now, uh, this is what we're looking at. In the next four months, one, two, three, four, after March, we're at like they all, we're close to the end of March. Right? We're in the 20th. We're pretty. We're two thirds of the way done with March. We have green ahead, most likely. According, like on average, we are probably going to see 
four more green months. That's an accurate assessment and synthesis based on this. And this is fair. This is a reliable source. Um, so if this was the end of July, I would be less bullish on going in and I would be more careful on, on sending by buy, buy signals and buy alerts. Right. But in my opinion, we're looking good. This is one of many reasons why the technicals look good for the NASDAQ. The RSI has cooled down. Uh, our month setup, uh, I guess that's what you call our month setup as far as average monthly stock market returns is looking good. Very good. Um, our, the best month is about to happen on average. April load up for April, guys. That's my, that's, that's my opinion. Um, all right, next up, economic calendar. Now, next week, we don't really have anything. We don't have Powell next week uh, unless they updated it in here just uh, that I have not seen. Okay, we do have some inflation action coming in. That will be interesting to see. Get in on Bitcoin before it's too late, in my opinion. Speaking of inflation, um, but uh, in my opinion, this is looking good. We don't have a ton of crazy and stuff like that. Like, look at this. We have literally, uh, what, four, five, six, seven things in one day, right? We don't have that many things next week, right? We don't have – the most we have in a day is five statistics, right? Um, and these can change, I believe. You know, sometimes some get added in. But right now, the stock market likes stability. The stock market likes the le – it wants the less of these – the better, right? It will go up the stock market on average. You know, if you did a little study, you know, in the aggregate, the stock market will go higher when there are less uh, news and tests and studies and things like this and speeches coming out. Current positions. All right, let me show you. Now, I, if you're new here, and we've, I think we've been getting a lot of new people. We've been growing a decent amount lately. So let me just show you, if you're new here, how you know I'm not just pumping and dumping the stocks. And one of the many things that sets me apart from other YouTubes, I literally show you the exact dollar amount I have in every single stock that I talk about. That's how you know I'm not pumping the stocks, right? I have a call for Nano Dimension, and I have my share position. And of course, this is a small position. I've been trimming my Nano Dimension position because I needed to get in skills and get that crazy 8% return in a day um, along with along with MP. I wish I got it a little lower on that one. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'll be looking to add on Nano Dimension. But as far as the price starts to go for Nano Dimension, any of your bear cases 40, any of your bull cases 80 to 100. Also talking a little bit about the April 7th price targets. Um, we've already hit uh, five of them. We've already hit five of them and we need to hit six, seven of them. So uh, yeah, we have... Uh, we have about half of, we have a little bit of time left april 7th we have about half of the time left so uh, i'm confident in these i'm very we almost hit bio nano we've almost hit mp nano dimensions getting closer mj is closer sundial is pretty close ctxr that's going to be the hard one if we're going to miss a price target that's probably going to be the one but guys these uh, i link the proof of uh my my price starts and you can just go back and watch the videos i don't think i think that's why no one really quite I've, I've never had anyone question me on these price starts because I, I literally you can just watch the videos where i set them <laughs> so there's no way I can be lying here because you can literally fact check me on this just by watching the old current position sections, you know, um, and I literally have them timestamped for you. So it's very convenient if you want to do that, if you're a hater and you don't believe me, or if you just want to fact check me, that's totally legit. So there you go. Relevant information in regards to the title has finished now. Feel free to click off if you have more important things to do. This is the part where I would do stuff most of you just do in the first five seconds plus cool stuff as well. Merch slash Patreon. Patreon is ready. We got several members. Already, we got merch is ready. Everything's good to go. Um, go check that. Go go use. Go click on the Patreon link and see if it's something. See if one of the tiers fit uh, what you are looking to gain, uh, and see see if I have a service that I can offer you that is worth the money. I tried to make them. I, I tried to make them very cheap. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to go on rant about how 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 much I'm barely I'm barely making a profit. Let's just say that as far as the Patreon, that's how cheap I I'm trying to be just to get. A, I'm just trying to be as fair as I can be as I can be and try to get as many members, try to get as good as a, a community as we can. BrandonBolsey.com. That's where you want to send your serious suggestions and questions. Weeble link. Click the Weeble link down below. Refer link. Uh, free stocks, free money, and and it gives me free stocks as well. If you if you do it right, which is pretty, it's pretty easy to do it right. You just go to the a hundred bucks and then you can take your free money and get out if you want uh success is never going to change our business model buy on into the moon execute order 66 it's not financial advice guys thank you all so much uh -huh.